Yeah. Is there anything more despicable than a minister standing in a pulpit because a born again audience has decided they don't want to hear it? And a world is dying. Somebody said, how did we lose America? We quit winning souls. We quit telling them they were wrong. Billy Graham told America they were wrong. He stood up there and he said that the women's missionary council leader is going to the same hell as the prostitute if she is not born again. Now, let me tell you something. I want you to understand that what I'm saying is not to condemn other people. In this conference, I know, I'm pretty sure that Richard Harris checked me out before he invited me. <laughs> and he knew that I was not gifted in constitutional law the way he is. What I'm gifted in is the gospel. And what I will tell you is this, the first sacred cow that I want to kill is the idea that you cannot tell a congregation, look, the day of us, and I'm going to, I'll give you a model. A man invited several people to his banquet, Jesus said, a great banquet. When the son of God says the banquet was great, you can write it down. And he said he invited all and they didn't come. That was our first test. We invited America to hear the gospel and they didn't come. So what did we do? We changed the gospel. Here's what this man did that the church didn't do. Got mad. Got mad. You know, you're going to wonder about me. But I, it makes me mad that people want to hear Oprah more than Mario Murillo. It makes me mad. I'm still, am I, am I okay so far? Now look. That's not arrogance. Don't call that arrogance. What Oprah teaches is oatmeal. It's too thick to swim through and too thin to stand on. Now, why should I apologize? Look at me, why should I apologize? What I'm telling you is gonna get you off of alcohol in one step instead of 12. This is going to make you want to keep your baby. This is going to deliver you from being a wife beater. This blood, when it touches you, changes your mind, gives you a new life. I, I was debating a socialist. He said, we can go in the ghetto and put a new suit on the, the men in the inner city. I said, and God will put a new man in that suit. Well, let me tell you, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it answers everything. Women's rights don't work until Christ is in the argument. We belong at the table of influence to tell America. You want racial justice, you want equity, you want truth, you want peace, you want violence to get off your streets. If there was more hell being preached in the pulpit, there'd be less hell in the ghetto. It's time for us to have a conversation with ourselves. I no longer want itching ears. I no longer want to run after a prophet that is saying crazy things. I don't need to lay around, roll on the floor, moan and get all emotional. Instead of getting up on my feet, putting on the armor of God and telling the devil, you cannot have the United States of America. There were gospel singing groups that developed a spirit of commercialism before the pandemic. 
Half the gospel labels are owned by secular companies anyway. So there are formulas for worship songs and there are formulas for uh, the repetition that you see in them. I, I love the old hymns because they seem to have had a larger vocabulary. <laughs> but one very famous Christian group was doing concerts during the pandemic that required those in attendance to get vaccinated. So here's what they did. They had a choice, watch me. They had a choice. The auditorium said, if you're gonna do your concert like you say, everyone that comes has to be vaccinated. So did they pray? Did they go to God and say, hmm, I wonder if what we're about to require of our fans might kill some of them. But no, the greater thing, and why are we watching scandal after scandal in the church? We have a disease. We will not attack anything that draws a crowd. It will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, I went and preached in a certain place. We had a massive turnout. In the pouring downpour of rain, 4,000 people showed up. And it rained on most of them that were outside under umbrellas, some of them without, in a cold northeast. They were so hungry to hear the word of God. And I mentioned Trump. Several of the local pastors got mad that I had mentioned Trump. They were able to look past all of the gangsters that were saved. They, were, they didn't notice any of the wheelchairs that were empty. I had mentioned Trump and they were so deranged in their mind that that was more important than what God was doing. That disease came from before the pandemic. But you know what is so interesting is that the lost souls sitting in the tent are looking at me and they say, what's wrong with mentioning Trump? I'm a Democrat. That didn't bother me. Why? Because they understood the context. They understood the context. And this context is, is a, the other sacred cow that I'm going to kill. I mention politics while I'm preaching the gospel. I tell millennials, your country is not a systemically racist accident that crawled out of Europe. I said, this thing was a miracle from the beginning. And I said, your friends in college are so stupid, they're actually toppling the statues of freedom fighters who were against slavery. I said, here's, and I, I looked at the millennials and I said, you're gonna be the most boring old people we've ever known in America. If you don't repent and change, you're gonna, I was telling university students this. I looked at them and I said, look, I want to show you what, if I opened up your iPhone, I would see pictures of food. <laughs> this is what I ate. I mean, you know, you have lost photographic subjects <laughs> when you're down to taking pictures of your plate. And I said, open my phone and you'll see that I have pictures of some of the young people that have been born again. Some of the testimonies of the miracles and the power of God that has flowed. And what does it mean? It means young people are open in a way we don't understand. Why are they listening to Jordan K. Peterson? Why are they listening to Candace Owen? Why are they listening to Ben Shapiro? Why is this going on? These three speakers have stolen our thunder because they teach virtue and expose political insanity.